Hey guys, how's it going? It's Kale from Tempo Storm here, and today I want to make a video talking about Sylvanas a little bit. Um, lately, Sylvanas is one of those characters, kind of like Tassadar, who's resurged back into the meta of the game and become a lot more popular. Um, I think I might actually end up making a like a new tier list type of video because a lot of these videos I'm making kind of are following the same format of uh, talking about a character who's become much stronger post patch. So let's get right into it. Um, Basically, Sylvanas, with this most recent patch, jumped up pretty much to uh, like A tier, and is picked most of the time in our you know in our practice and stuff like that. Um, we've been the we've been using her a lot. We feel she's very strong, and a lot of other regions are also picking up and playing a lot more Sylvanas. Um, and let me go over a few reasons why. So, with the most recent patch, the wave clearing tanks have all kind of lost some of their edge. Um, you know, some might say their their OPness that was how much uh, they could just like easily just free wave clear, you know, with one talent. So uh, that's something that got you know majorly changed for both the Orc and Johanna, and so it left kind of the whole like uh, mass pushing strats of all lanes just by having wave clear tanks in every lane. That kind of fell off. And then, so now you see characters like Sylvanas becoming more popular because she has so much potential to wave clear um, and push lanes. So really there's two main builds that are important to know on Sylvanas and they're very similar. Um, the biggest change is going to come with the first talent tier. And whether you're going the reduced cooldown on Shadow Dagger or the Barb Shot. So uh, personally on maps where you're going to be having like long uh, situations where you're going to be kind of fighting over an objective and dancing and poking, I think Lost Soul is definitely the way to go. Um, the two second reduction on, on your cooldown is, is huge just overall the, with the spread constantly going off. It gives you vision of everyone. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't give you vision, but you can see where the numbers are, so you kind of have an idea where everybody is. Um, and then just constantly putting that out. And then once you hit 16, of course, you get the cold embrace, which gives you the vulnerability on your uh, W and so with the also having the reduced cooldown on that it's really incredibly powerful in the late game so that's probably the, the core build if you want just one you know go to Sylvanas build I, w I would take is you want to go the two second cooldown reduction at one at four you want to go on Venom at seven you want to go on Stable Poison Unstable Poison is, is a really important talent Done. For you know what makes Sylvana such a strong character, um, as soon as you get Unstable Poison, the fact that you're able to just throw a W and just Q right through the wave um, allows you to just beat people in rotations. Allows you to just put a lot of pressure, you know, in, in pushing and all that stuff. You don't even have to worry about minions. Also, when enemies are trying to kind of like hide in the minion wave to avoid getting hit by abilities, kind of like a Sonya Q or something like that. Um, your minion explosion does actually get a fair amount of value on the heroes themselves. So you're going to go the unstable poison at 10, uh, silence at, I mean, sorry, at 7, and then silence is your ultimate I'm at 10. Um, pretty much in no situation are you going to be taking possession right now. It's just not, it's just not worth it. Um, silence is an amazing ult. It really takes some work though to get silence to the point where you're getting a lot of effectiveness out of it in every fight. Um, there's a lot of things you want to look out for in situations where My it's not as good. For example, forward. if the other team has like a Zeratul or Zagara, you want to be careful not to be using silences while your team is not able to follow up on them. You, you have to really give your team an opportunity to capitalize on with silence. Um, so those kind of characters can make it very tricky to get good value you know, out of Wailing Arrow. But with some work, you, know, you, can, you can really be making fights one-sided for your team. Um, at 13, most, mostly you're going to be getting Evasive Fire. That's pretty much the go-to 90% of the time. Um, sometimes Spell Shield's good, especially if the other Get team the has order. like a high isolation pick comp. Um, for example, if they have like a Zeratul and a Jaina, where you know that Jaina's flanking as soon as the VP comes down, and you just need to survive a little bit longer for your, your support to get a, the heal on you, um, Spell Shield can be a decent choice there as well. Um, at 16, you're going to always be going Cold Embrace. Cold Embrace is extremely strong. The spread with the vulnerability on your W is absolutely huge. And once you get to that 16 point of the game, um, the poke that your team puts out while 
the uh, W's out is, is just enormous. Um, a 20, you're going to go Fury of the Storm, pretty standard stuff there. Um, and so the major difference if you're going to go Barb Shot is if you're playing on a map that has, um, like, especially small maps where the you're kind of doing the roaming us. rotations, um, right from the get go, Barb Shot guarantees that your team's going to be way ahead of the other team in clear. Um, you just go straight to the wave, spam out your Q. It's you're not spending any mana when you do that too, so it's really efficient. Um, and also, once you get the barb shot uh, at level seven, having unstable poison, you don't even need to use your W anymore. Uh, you just walk up to the middle minion and Q it, and your Q will just chain through the whole wave. So that's really nice. You just spend no mana at all. The other thing about barb shot that's kind of underlooked is the amount of PVE damage that you're doing to bosses and objectives. So this is on, you know, Battlefield of Eternity or on like Cursed Hollow where like boss races are very common. Um, getting 300 or 300% uh, damage out of Barb Shot is actually very huge. Um, so the, those are the kind of situations where I would take Barb Shot when you're playing on maps like Tomb of the Spider Queen, Dragonshire, or uh, personally I've been liking it on Cursed, but that's a tough decision. Um, I think either is, is very effective on, the, on that map, depending on whether you're going to be doing a lot of base racing, I mean boss racing and stuff like that. So um, yeah, have fun playing Sylvanas guys. Uh, let me know if you guys want to just see like a straight up tier list video, because I feel like this is almost like a tier list series that I'm doing, just talking about the characters that have changed and which ones are popular and why they're popular. So uh, let me know what you guys think about that. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a good I'm one. Here. Take it easy. Peace. Don't waste it on something if, like, an objective is spawning in five seconds, like a pants-on-head idiot. But don't cherish it like a newborn baby bird either.